Uh, let's now talk a little bit about diffuse gray surface radiation exchange. So we've been talking about black body radiation, radiation exchange. Let's get into the diffuse gray surfaces. So again, uh, two key assumptions. One, diffuse, no angular dependence. Two, it's gray, no um, uh, wavelength dependence, but it is not, it's no longer one, right? No, absorptivity is no longer one. So diffuse gray radiation exchange. So the first thing we should talk about, probably should have already mentioned, is um, this property of materials. So it's true that for it's true that for a given wavelength in a given direction, we can say that the reflectivity rho at a given wavelength and direction plus a given absorptivity at a wave that same wavelength and direction uh, plus the transmissivity tau. Uh, is equal to one. This is uh, basically an energy balance, right? We're saying a ray comes in or a photon comes in and hits the surface. What can it do? Well, it can either be reflected, rho, it can be absorbed, alpha, or it can just pass through the surface, tau. Those are the three possibilities. Um, so here we could just kind of sketch out what's happening here. So we have our surface, uh, we have some light coming in, and it can do, you know, those two things, it could be reflected, it could be absorbed, or it could be transmitted um, through, the, surf, through, through the, the surface itself. All right, we're normally gonna be dealing with opaque surfaces. And so uh, for opaque surfaces, tau is zero, right, at all wavelengths. Uh, it's usually not the case that a surface is gonna be um, opaque at all wavelengths, or you can go to a large enough Wavelength, and you get radio waves that transfer, you know, through walls and things like that. Or you go to, say, glass. Right? There's a reason why you don't typically get sunburn through your window. It's because uh, that window is opaque in the UV region where where that damaging radiation is coming in. So there's usually not a surface that's entirely transparent or enti entirely opaque. But we'll just we'll make this assumption. Um, and then the other thing I want to point out is is Kirchhoff's law. So Kirchhoff's law for radiation says that alpha at a given wavelength and direction is always equal to uh, emissivity at a given wavelength and direction. Okay. So absorptivity is always equal to emissivity at a given wavelength and direction. And, and it's important to realize that uh, once I move away from wavelength and direction um, specifiers, those things no longer have to be equal to each other, right? Because I could, so for example, if you know, go back to that solar panel example, I could be absorbing a bunch of radiation in the solar spectrum, right? Coming in from T is equal to 5,800 Kelvin. So its absorptivity in the solar spectrum might be really high, but then you move to the thermal spectrum and maybe the properties are different there, right? And so you have a, a disconnect between the solar absorptivity and the thermal emissivity, right? So alpha is no longer equal to epsilon in the regions that we care about, right? Uh, so just keep in mind that that's the case. Normally, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna assume at least that alpha lambda is equal to epsilon lambda. Normally, we assume that's the case. Um, and if we're making the gray assumption, so if it's a gray body, then we can say alpha is equal to um, emissivity. Okay, so uh, let's see that's the case. So let's let's introduce this idea now for diffuse gray surface radiation exchange. We often talk about this concept called radiosity. All right, so radiosity we give the symbol capital J. So radiosity we give it the symbol capital J, uh, and it's J associated with some surface I. Okay, so J I the definition of this is going to be uh, light that's reflected from a surface plus light that's emitted. So you draw a little control volume. This is doing this kind of out of order. Let's draw a little control volume around this. Let's say this surface here. All right. What are the things? What are the things that are happening in the surface where something could be uh, entering or leaving? Right. So we have something coming in here. We'll call this irradiation G. Right, so this is irradiation G on surface I. Uh, that can be absorbed, reflected, or transmitted. Um, if it's reflected, 
what do we have leaving? We have rho times GI. Your GI is irradiation. And that has units of watts per meter squared. Right? So we, it could be reflected. If it's reflected, it's rho GI. If it's transmitted, um, it would be what, tau times GI. And if it's absorbed, it would be alpha times GI. And so those are the things that are happening there. Um, but the surface itself can also be emitting power, right? It, it is emitting power. So not only are we reflecting stuff away, but we're possibly emitting as well. So if we're emitting, uh, let's draw this in green. So we're emitting from the surface. The emitted power is going to be um, what epsilon, if this is a gray surface, epsilon I times the black body EB I. Okay. So the idea of radiosity is radiosity is, is this stuff here. Right? It's these, these two things that are possibly leaving the surface. Uh, when it comes to doing radiation transfer problems with multiple surfaces, surface J out there in space doesn't really care whether surface I originally emitted that radiation or whether it was just reflected. It just cares that it's coming from I, right? So radiosity is this, this idea that we give to anything that's leaving um, surface I. Okay, so anyways... Let's write this out. So Ji is going to be uh, rho I times Gi. This is our reflected. Uh, and then that's plus epsilon I Bb I. So this is our emitted. And that's our radiosity. Um, let's see, what can we do with this? So um, if we assume that the surface is opaque, uh, so tau is equal to zero, then we can uh, rewrite this as uh, the following. So it's Ji is equal to uh, one minus epsilon i times Gi plus epsilon i, sorry, Ebi. Right, and you see where this came from. So if I say, it's uh, opaque, tau is zero. Then what's left? Well, what's left is that um, absorptivity has to equal emissivity for this gray surface. And then reflectivity is just one minus absorptivity. Okay, so that's where we get that one minus epsilon. Okay, so we rewrite it that way. Let's also just do a little energy balance on our, on our surface. So energy balance on the surface, QI, right? This is the total heat that's going to the surface. Uh, is going to be equal to the area of surface I times its radiosity right, minus uh, what was uh, see, the radiation on the surface. So minus AI times VI. Okay. So this is the energy balance on the surface. Uh, let's rewrite this a little bit. So we just say Q dot I is equal to AI, JI minus GI. Okay, let's call this here equation one, and let's call this here equation two. Um, and then the next thing we want to do is rewrite this uh, energy balance in terms of, um, let's say, in terms of uh, radiosity. So we want to get to this relationship between uh, what's happening in the black body part of the equation and the radiosity part. We don't really kind of tie those two concepts together. So let's do that. So let's take, uh, let's see what take equation one and substitute it into equation two. Uh, and we are left with uh, solving for GI. We have GI is equal to JI minus epsilon I EB, EB I, um, divided by one minus epsilon I. And that's just from combining those two equations. Um, okay, so then let's use our GI here, this uh, now definition of GI in two. Right now, this is combining the two equations. So Q dot I is equal to AI times let's see, JI minus now G. So G is minus JI minus epsilon I EBI over one minus epsilon I. Okay, now we've combined one and two. Okay, uh, let's simplify this down a little bit. Um, and what? So we pull out a one minus epsilon. So this becomes... So this becomes AI times uh, JI. Uh, we have one minus epsilon in the numerator, one minus epsilon in the denominator, minus 
uh, j i minus epsilon i e b i over one minus epsilon i. Okay. We just multiplied the, the first j i term by one minus epsilon i over one minus epsilon i. It just helps us kind of pull this out. So we end up with our final equation, or sim almost final equation is q dot i is equal to a i uh, times, let's see, minus epsilon i j i minus, oh, sorry, plus epsilon i e b i divided by one minus epsilon i. Okay, last step then is q dot i is equal to all that work for epsilon i a i over one minus epsilon i times e b i minus j i. Okay. So we follow that. So a bunch of algebra, a uh, few mistakes, and then we end up with this equation. So this is, again, for about the 50th time in this class, a potential and a resistance, right? So we see the potential here is what? So we have EB, I, and we have JI, and then between that, we have a resistance. And this resistance is going to be R from so RS, uh, for surface I, and that's going to be the inverse of this one minus epsilon I over epsilon I AI. Okay, so we just define this, this term here uh, is our surface resistance. What is it, like, what is a surface resistance? What does that mean? So a surface resistance is uh, kind of how much impedance is associated with going from the black body emissive power to the actual radiosity, right? There's a resistance associated with the difference there. So what would happen, let's say, okay, what happens if the emissivity of the surface is one, right? If the emissivity of the surface is one, then it kind of is like a short circuit, right? It ends up that EB has to be equal to J for that. So you kind of force those two things together and We'll think about that. So if it's emissivity of one and it short circuits to be equal, that is the same thing as saying it's a black surface, right? Black body. So uh, the surface resistance kind of describes that, that impedance associated with the difference there. Um, so we're going to use this concept then to write out like resistance networks and solve multi-surface problems for this. Any questions on this? This part is a little slightly confusing. Okay. Um, so I didn't, wasn't clear about it, but this is this heat transfer is called Q dot I. And Q dot I is a heat transfer from kind of a surface to the same surface. Think about it that way. So it's like a, it's kind of an imaginary heat transfer that's going from the black version of the surface to the actual real surface that has a radiosity. Okay. All right. So in the last couple of minutes, let's actually draw out an example three surface problem here. So let's imagine we have and that's a little hard to see and we'll talk about it. So let's imagine we have the three surfaces. We have possible heat coming in in each of the three surfaces, right? Q, uh, Q dot one here coming in, three, two. So the heat's coming into the surface or leaving the surface if it's negative. We have irradiation, G1, G2, G3. The irradiation is gonna be the sum of everything that's hitting this surface from all the other surfaces, right? Um, Radiosity, J1, J2, that's going to be whatever leaving every, every single surface. So we have these three surfaces, and uh, we can write out for, for this particular problem, we could write out a, a radiation network. So before we had this, this three node problem, it kind of looked like this. Right? We'd have, we have a, a three node problem that kind of looks like this, where we have uh, resistance, 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 uh, these are going to be geometric resistances, R, G. And so this, let's call this node three, this node one, this node two. So this would be R, G from one to three. This would be R, G from one to two, R, G from two to three. So, but now with the, with the radiosity concept, radiosity nodes only interact with, they're the only ones that interact with the other services, right? Now with the, with the emissivity of less than one, that black body part of it is not directly interacted with any, any other surface. So what do I mean there? So we would call this node, 
uh, up here. Let's call this node up here J2. Right, so J2 is going to be the node as opposed to before it was EB2. Um, down here, let's call this node J3. And then down here, let's call this node J1. And so now my radiosity part of it is that's the thing that the other surfaces are seeing. Um, to introduce the black body, we need this additional resistance now. And so this up here would be EB2. This would be EB3. Down here would be E, B, one. Okay, and then each of these resistances is going to be our space resist, or, or surface resistance, sorry. So surface resistance is going to be R, S, or surface I is one minus epsilon I over A, I, epsilon I, right? So there's our surface resistance. Um, our geometric resistance is related to the view factor. And then we have you know, three maybe sources of heat. So we have Q dot uh, two, let's say we have Q dot three, and we have Q dot one, okay? So you can go through now and write out um, you know, networks for these um, just in the same way we did before with the different you know, summation of, of equations there. Uh, with, I know at times, just let me write two more equations you might need. One would be, uh, so now we have both the black body and the radiosity. So you have to do energy balances on both of those. So I'm gonna write, so Q dot for I is going to be equal to uh, E, sorry, E B I minus J I divided by R S I. And then that's gonna be epsilon I A I E B I minus J I or one minus epsilon I. Right, so this is an energy balance for every single surface involving the surface resistance. You need one of these for every single, right, for, for I equals one to N. You need one for every single surface I. And then the last equation is going to be Q dot I. Uh, now this is an energy balance uh, on the radiosity node. So this is gonna be the sum from J equals one to N of the two, so J I minus J, J uh, over R, uh, let's see, R geometry from I to J, okay? So now you can do this equation again for I equals one to N, and you should have this with combine, combine this with the uh, uh, boundary conditions for every single node, you should have, you should have enough to solve uh, N surface.